if anyone else is with us or no it's just us here just us here no yeah. one's zooming in so we have a quorum okay there. we're good all right welcome to the july 2021 uh, EAC meeting for the town of McCandless. I'd um, like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first on the agenda, approval of the minutes from June. Does anybody have any comments or additions or changes to the minutes? No. Uh, we have a motion to approve. Second. All right. Um, all, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Thank you. All right. Next up, we're moving on to project updates and discussion items. Uh, first, the coal tar resolution results from last month. Um, Shelly took the coal. Shelly actually put a a resolution to a, a draft resolution together to take to council uh, for the, I, I guess, backing up our recommendation to recommend that coal tar products not be used in the township and then have it formalized in, in a resolution, which is not an, is, is not an ordinance. It's not binding. Um, and she brought it up before council, presented some more information, even had uh, Bob Grimm presents some, some information as well, and it was voted down by council. We brought it in front of, I brought it in front of them twice. Yes. Once yes. in the meeting before, and then in, and then again for reconsideration. I couldn't remember with, if that was before our yeah, last meeting or not. Yeah, it was two times. The second time, because I just wanted an opportunity to try to um, respond to comments made by their council members. Um, just to confirm and clarify and um yeah it was a i believe it was a four to three vote it was. against so it was um but however um we did um per the meeting prior to that we did get approval for the project form component related particularly to education mm -hmm. correct cool. so we do we do still have that pending and as an immediate follow-up, I'm going to begin trying to line up speakers for a, a speaker series event that is basically information for hazardous materials around the home, in your, in your yard, in your driveway, in your house, uh, with, with hoping to get either Mandy Steele or somebody else to talk about coal tar, and then someone else to talk about um, Lawn, lawn chemicals and chemicals in the home oh, just, and just have a panel discussion. It's just some of that simple stuff like the, with the COVID people using Clorox and then using a, a detergent on top of it, which releases chlorine gas and stuff like that. Yeah, that's just. Mm -hmm. um, right. So that's, that's how I plan to at least begin to get started on, on our project. And I believe we have some other items to, to follow up on as well. Um, which would involve potentially contacting businesses and, and we can get into that at a later date. So any other questions on the, the coal tar issue? Just to sort of bring everybody else up to date, I've just been keeping my eyes open for when a parking lot gets- mm, Right, uh, right. What do you call it? Um, sealed. 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 Resealed. Right. Um, I think I've seen three of them so far. And usually they have a sign up and you can either call them up or um, Google them or they have a website. And in each case, I think it's three times now, I, there's an email string that I have put together. Um, they do not, they list the products that they use and they, the products are all asphalt based. Yeah. Um, it was good. a couple good of them to know. over yes. on Perry Highway and I don't know where I saw the other one, but um, so again, <laughs> you know, we haven't seen it over at Home Depot or Lowe's. I haven't seen it, you know, in the bank parking lot or the, the office park parking lot. So we're, I'm, I'm 
still not sure this is a real issue or not, but um, or where it is, where it comes from. That was one of the uh, questions we had for Mandy that she didn't get back. Yeah, to. and that was one of council's concerns too. Was it really an, which is reasonable, mm -hmm. is it really an issue? And I think that what, because I did quite a bit of research afterward, what it was is I would say there's two likely candidates for using it. And I don't know how much this happens around McCandless, but you always know, hear in like in some other states, um, there's groups of people, sometimes it's referred to as the gypsies or whatever, who are yeah. into that business and they go around in neighborhoods and right. say, oh, go to your neighbor and say, hey, I'll do yours too. And right. okay. that kind of thing. Right. That's where um, some, I mean, that's one concern is that these kind of ad hoc sealers right. who just go around um which probably doesn't happen that much in McCandless and then it would just be in my mind some um because the coal tar um product does appear to be slightly less expensive right. okay. um and if you have and I want I don't want to say unscrupulous developer but a, a a landlord, a developer that has a really big parking lot. Uh -huh. And if they can get their hands on something that's a little cheaper, yeah. they may not, by the way, they might not even be aware right. of the, they're just going for the cheapest, mm -hmm. say, right. Jimmy, my asphalt guy, get me the cheapest product. <laughs> so, it, you know, it, it was, that was a, an uphill battle I had with them. Are we trying to solve for a problem that doesn't even exist in the um, um Well, I, yeah, I guess I'd say just, I mean, keep your eyes open, you know, in your neighborhood. Like so. Blazer Drive development, I sure hope they're not planning on uh, the size of that parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, typically they don't seal it until a few years after well, the, that's the true. asphalt goes down. Mm -hmm. But um, seen the a next couple spring on Perry Highway. And um, another one would be North Allegheny today. You know, what do they use? What does CCAC use? What does Passivant use? You know, just like, you know, we were saying Giant Eagle, it's a kind of a corporate decision. Mm -hmm. they, they don't go out, they're not going to hire, you know, Joe and. I think with France, legitimate, so. it does seem like with legitimate um, entities, be they businesses or institutions, that at this juncture, because right. the whole coal tar thing started in late. 90s early 2000s and i think it's pretty well known in the industry because what one of the little tidbits i i discovered was the pennsylvania asphalt pavers association mm -hmm. i think that's what it was called which is obviously an advocacy advocacy group mm -hmm. they actually are um are supporting a ban on the product in pennsylvania entirely oh, right. so so that was all good, right. good news. A friend of mine whose family company is one of the <coughs> located there in Mars, that they're a chemical distribution business and they, they distribute a lot of asphalt products and stuff and they, they won't touch coal tar. Right? Mm -hmm. Good know, to know. With Pete right. about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Good discussion. Uh, item B, sustainability. Uh, we learned heard from Jonathan last minute. He is unable to make it. He had a work commitment come up tonight. Um, he says his May, June, and July for him are very busy work months. So he hopes to be back with us in August. Um, Shelly, I don't know if you want to talk at all about what you're hoping to do with the sustainability uh, yeah, class. Uh, uh, sure, just for the just for the committee. Sure. Um, and I'm going to follow up with Jonathan you know, outside of the meeting. Um, if for those of you who are here, I think most of you, Jonathan um, hopefully is working on kind of a real, real short cliff note version of each project and kind of maybe a short list of, of recommendation takeaways that council might want to consider in the future, you know, that are realistic, potentially practical and helpful to the town. Um, just in a, because the information we, loaded onto council you know i just i just don't know that everybody took in all with the videos and the written stuff and everything so in conjunction with just a reminder summary of what these students have done maybe with some potential outcomes at um you know at, at, at councils if council so desires 
um, and also use that opportunity in that meeting where we put it in their folder to um, take for all of the students to do a commendation or a recognition letter so that they have that to take with them, you know, add to their resume and everything um, as a thank you from the town for their efforts. So that kind of, to me, was the wrapping up the project, you know, tying it with a bow. Um, and I happen to be talking, we happen to be talking to Tony Kurzman um, recently, and um, he knows we're going to need a list of the students. So I am just need to find out from Jonathan where he stands on the summary. So I will let everyone know at what, I don't know whether they'll want to arrange to have any of the students attend the council meeting or if, or zoom in maybe, but um, whenever that's going to happen, which I hope it happens at, like by the first August meeting, I'll let y'all know. Okay, thanks. Okay, next up, litter subcommittee report. Um, do you have a short report for us this morning? Very short. Yeah, um, yeah we really haven't uh, done too much of anything. Um, it's hot, it's humid, the grass is tall, uh, the poison ivy is out, and um, we're all, you know, old people. So <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much we can do <laughs> in the summer. Um, anyway, um, to me, the litter subcommittee is on um, life support, I guess I'd say. Um, we've had a couple drop out. Um, I'm not really interested in continuing with it. Uh, we have a meeting on Monday night uh, at Lynn's house to kind of talk about where we're going and what we're doing and how we could better um, you know, serve our, our goals. Um, so that's, that's kind of it. I won't get into a lot of the nitty gritty details, but that's where we are. We still have a um, cleanup event scheduled, uh, tentatively scheduled October 16th, I think. Is that correct? I Saturday. So that's what you have given us. Make sure time. I get the right tickets. Saturday, October 16th, um, the same litter cleanup as John's, you know, a number one guy on that. Um, Lynn and Kathy are going to be doing a lot of the organization for that. Um, volunteers start maybe in September, start advertising it, that kind of thing. So um, that's definitely still going to happen. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Okay. What time does cleanup day start? Nine ish, nine thirty. Okay. Yeah, people start popping in usually a little bit after nine, and then everyone breaks out around ten. Okay. And I'm guessing we can actually do the in-person thing again this time right. because all the restrictions are gone, so we can, right. you know, bring in all the bagels and donuts and such. Even though it was, it, it did seem to be less chaotic. Oh yeah, I mean, to, there are benefits <laughs> to, just to not having a big gathering, but then it's yeah. a lot of work leading up to it as well, just right. reaching out to all the teams gotcha. individually. But okay, yeah, it all works out in the end. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Thanks. All right, green space, Jeff. We have a couple of projects. Yeah, we do. We got a couple of things going on. So sorry, I missed last meeting. So since or in June. Um, we got, with Angela's help, got um, a letter for the uh, second grant, obviously, okay. for, from uh, Senator Williams and then uh, Representative McCurry. We had one for them, too, as well. So we had add that, added that in June after it was submitted in, at the end of May. So I'm not sure if that was in anywhere. So just to communicate that again, because okay. from Great. last meeting. Um, so in June and July, so far, basically, um, I met with, uh, well, I know it's down the report, but we, we'll, we'll touch base on that a little bit more with the Adam Butler. And, and so. I know we kind of yeah, up here. Go ahead, so. and go ahead and okay. talk about it. So um, in reference to the grants, though, I, I um, Bob um, was there as well. So I had asked him, we talked briefly about the, the grants. We don't look to hear anything for until the fall, probably late fall okay. for anything. At least the first one, the second one might not even be to the first of the year. Um, 
So that's the update on that so far. If there is anything else, we'll the township will know. I'm sure Bob will know first, and then everybody else will know. But the council will know second, and then I'll know last, and then I'll communicate to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> or you might know before I do, and I'll know last. Um, however, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep on top of that for sure. Uh, on a personal level with that too, I've been kind of exploring. I had my dog down at the Vestal Field again after we walked out again and kind of went across the street, ventured around up to the, the street field short line, which um, uh, funny enough, orders Adam Butler's place as well too. So that's kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, unique. Um, went down and saw where Prado Park was because I've never been there. So the next journey for me probably this month is to have her with me and we'll go for a nice little jaunt around that park but um just to take a look at it which now so now more so is interesting to me because of um when we met with adam so i'll just go into that um his property runs off of pine creek where and then to what's the road what's the dirt road that goes up there is it the heart is it harmony, is it harmony? Is it, yeah harmony so he has the land that um runs right up against the harmony okay right off of like pine creek so side. right on on the same side as Pine Creek or opposite side? Uh, the opposite side of the or... creek. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's right on Pine he Creek. Right. Yeah, he's only been there since August of last yeah. year, 2020. Um, so that was interesting as well, too, just to know that he has that little corner at the intersection of Pine Creek and the Harmony. How did he feel about a trail coming through there? I, I only went to mention it to him at the end of our walk. We had uh, myself, Bob, Kim, Adam, um, Kelly, and is it Lynn from the activities. I think that's who was there. And then she had to leave. So um, so uh, when you go up Adam's driveway, it's a gravel driveway. He had uh, a, a half an acre of land or something there with a very unique tree. If you ever saw Avatar, the original movie with the, the tree that they all had as the mother tree. <laughs> it's actually what it looked like. And everybody was joking. It's, it's a dead tree, but the thing is huge. And it's got these huge branches and it's like a it's like a picturesque like logo. That's what they were talking about. This is the this is the logo, and you know it was kind of unique because he had cut a couple paths, and they were talking about um, the gardens and 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 bird watchings and and um, planting different different things for you know uh, watersheds and anything that can come up with any green space and trail and um, so again you know he is an outgoing thinker as far as ideas and things that he had. He's willing to let us use his land up to a certain point before it gets up to his house and his residential area, obviously. Um, but then that does go up to the Harmony. So um, I did mention about the Potter Trail and things of that nature that down the road, that's what we're looking to do is tie in a couple of the trails from Harmony to Potter, Potter to Vestal and um, Pine Creek or whatever. I mean, I know that's looking way down the road, but I mentioned it to him and his eyes went like this while I was so I think there would be a neat spot because it's kind of in the middle and it's right along Pine Creek Road. Um, but he has a ton of ideas. He's a um, production um, person, graphic designer type thing. So he goes out and does all kind of media production and things like this. And he can do drones and, you know, all kind of video. And he's going to, um, uh, this was just yesterday too. So we were like, yeah, when our meetings tomorrow can you have that video to us he's going to take a video of his property probably from the bird's eye view and then the, the street level for us as well so when i get that we'll i'll forward it to everyone take a look at it and, and it, it's kind of neat um it's actually a little it looked like an old like transit station sitting right off of his road so he's got some un unique things there on his property that he's been finding and it looked like something that might have been moved from the short line to inward to the property. And I'm like, well, let's see if we can tie some of this historical, you know, um, things of the town, like the short line and the uh, the sculptures that the other gentleman has and stuff on on the property as well. So, yeah. So once we get to that point, that's a good idea. Yeah. So um, it was a very interesting conversation. He is willing to do pretty much anything. He's like, I'm coming to you. I'm basically going, here it is. You guys tell me what you want. And we were going back to him and saying, well, you tell us what you want us to do and we'll help, you know, and we'll work together. So at the end, him and I had about five minutes before everyone wanted to leave. And we were just like, let's come up with some unique ideas. So it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a very interesting opportunity. 
and this is something we can work on the activities yeah so you can work with two separate committees and can do this you know us as the edc and the activities as well uh, as far as you know designing promoting presenting and then you know making something really happen uh, how long something like that'll take i'm not really sure um obviously when you get into fall and then winter you know i obviously see nothing happening before next spring you know um but i mean even even some things as he was like there's a there's an app called seek where you can go in and see a bird or something and you take a picture of it and it tells you everything about the bird mm -hmm. and it's like the if you do pokemon go or geo catching right. make a combination of that and it would be really cool for the township to go around and have something like that there on our trails even in the north park you know little uh, pod stations and then you know hit your phone on um so there's a lot of different things and neat ideas that mm -hmm. people were just bouncing back and forth so uh it's kind of wide open but um some some really cool ideas that i think we can put to that and, and along that too we can have i mean there would be gosh i couldn't say dozens of opportunities for for um, you know, speaker series and you know birds and just the wetlands and the green space and history of the Harmony Trail or, or the uh, short line and things of that nature. There's just infinite amount of opportunities with things that he wants to do. So that was was there a, was there a station there? I, I mean, there was a there was an Ingemar right on that line. And where was the next one north? That would, that's a logical place to have one. Right. Yeah. Well, it obviously had been moved. Um, there was no foundation that we could see, or, or, or he jumped out, and yeah. it looked like someone who had had that property before had found that like over by the road, and then had moved it because there's no way that it would be. You have a station that's like here to the white car. You're not gonna have a station that far away, you know. So you, you obviously could tell that it was moved, but uh, it's still it's still intact, and that was kind of cool. But it looked exactly like you'd see the old Pat Buster transit stations that. The little square with flat roof and the windows half on each side. And that's a, that's the first thing I said when I saw it. I said, that looks like. And how big is the property? Did he say? Are we talking about? Uh, or? He did say how. I want to say five to seven acres. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. Don't hold me to that. I'll have to ask him again. He did say in conversation, but I don't remember. Okay. But not all of it's going to be usable for. I mean, he has the front. So you up his driveway. It's off to the right. And then his driveway kind of loops back around and his house sits there. And then he has another couple of acres of woods behind there. So I think he said that we could do something with that as well, too. But he just wants to kind of limit as far as anything the halfway up the driveway where we are that goes to the residence. So it's sure, not, not sure. disturbing his own private space, per se. And that was when the survey markers were out there last year when I was out there, it was one of the other homeowners that's right on, on Harmony Lane in there. We were talking about, you know, who's the new guy going to be, what's he going to be like kind of thing. And that's good that he's, he's somebody that we can work with. On yeah, stuff for now. sure. Yeah, he's really interested in it. First thing he says, yeah, I'll donate all of, all of this and you guys can, we'll work together and come up with something to do. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you, know, you don't see that very often. Right, I hear people right. wanting to do that. I mean, without certain parameters and, and uh, guidelines that they want to follow them. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, nice guy, super nice guy. He is an English, English bloke. So uh, he, yeah, spoke in an accent and then, uh, but yeah, very, very cool. Very super nice guy and willing to work. So well, I appreciate you going to the yeah, meeting and, and connecting with everyone. Yeah, it just happened that. to be good timing for me. So in between everything else going on. So. That's great. Yeah. Jeff, if you, um, in the future, mm -hmm. if you have any um, reason, you know, maybe in, as the thing proceeds in concert with the activities, many person or whatever to be going back out there, would you let me know? Because that is my ward and I'd like to meet this guy. I, I will. Yeah, I'm sorry, he did ask, but, and then Kim said that you had had, you know, you had a, some, <laughs> Got a some new hit. yeah, walking <laughs> through the woods and the bushes and the smush, smushy land was probably, wouldn't have been Wasn't probably appropriate ready, for you. Yeah, I, not ready I for will that. be soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and he said the same thing because he asked who you were and, you know. Okay. Well, I'm glad someone was there to say why I wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. I, yeah. He's aware. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, not a problem. I'd, I'd love to I see I plan on reaching property. out to him again too. I want to give him a little time to go over some stuff. And he wanted to, he was working on the video, like I said. So, Perfect. Um, that was supposed to be distributed. So, we'll see how long that takes. Okay. Thank how, you. How was the activities committee? 
involved or how did they get started on this? Or? I guess Kim had reached, and when Adam reached out to Kim, Kim had reached out to both the, right. probably Judy and whoever was in charge of the activities oh, committee right. just to oh, see correct. where they could, you know, more hands on deck um, going. Right. On. Yeah. There, there have been several projects that have come up that it's been suggested that right. we, we reach out to, to that committee as well. Yeah. They're excited too, to jump in and help and just see kind of a vision that he has for mm -hmm. his property. So. Thanks. Sure. Um, let's see where you, you also, well, I guess we can, we can look at that further down the list. Um, landscape planning guide update. It's still in the process. We're, we're gathering listing. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to have something put together here. Next month. It, it, as I'm driving around, it's like, you know, we, we talked about that new, the new condominium development that the trees basically under the lines yeah, and, yeah. and McCandless crossing with the oak trees planted right underneath the utility lines. Then Ningamore today, a new house that's built over there. They've got trees planted that are like 10 feet offset. So in 10 years from now, they'll be into the lines. And that's the kind of stuff that we need to right. help people to make wise choices. Right. Are you, you talking about Blazer Drive or or because they are starting to plant over there now? I see. No, no, this, this is in McCandless Crossing. Right. If you're going up to, to LA Fitness. Oh, right, right. You yeah. Know, you've got all those oak trees planted underneath the utility lines. Um, yeah. The new condominiums that are on the other side of McKnight from us here, they've got a right as mm. Ingemar yeah. comes down to McKnight there. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, they, they've planted trees that are right next to the utility lines and okay. then a new house over there in Ingemar. I'm not sure if it's in McCandless or Franklin Park. It's one of those. It's, you know. Yeah, because the big I'm, trees underneath utility lines isn't a good idea. Yeah, I noticed they're starting to plant trees and um, trees and bushes and shrubs and everything at um, over on Blazer, the okay. development there. And and I know we've several of the lists we've gathered are very clear about delineating which ones are are large shade trees and which ones are are not. I forget what the name of the category is, um, but yeah, the lower the shorter growth things that are appropriate, appropriate for, for that situation, right? Which is not the big shade trees. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try and, and, and get, get some more progress on that project this month. I know since there's a lot of development coming up. I, I have time now, so okay. give me a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next up, community outreach items. We're actually starting to have some things pop back up now. Um, Things are open, loosening up. Jeff, you've already taken care of the Adam Butler property item on here. Um, I believe you were also looking into the NAEC stream awareness. Correct. So Beth and I have gone back and forth a little bit right after we had our little walk meeting and whatnot. Um, so that was some good, some good info and things of like that. I think there's a lot. There's some good, good topics. Some good speaker, obviously, opportunities. Now I waited because I didn't know which side of Pine Creek Road Adams' property was on. Right. I was hoping that he was on the creek side, but he wasn't. But so uh, that's what I was waiting to see first mm -hmm. of all, because I thought maybe. If those two could mesh together, you know, get him and have his property and use his property for something of that nature, uh, that would have been that would have been you know gold. But his but, property uh, doesn't include nah, the creek. It's on the so, other side okay. of the road. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go back to Beth and then see what we can do. And and I mean, I think the my one of my first thoughts was trying to get someone's house or someone had a house right on the creek and kind of. Uh, use their land as an example for maybe a tour or a speaker tour or something to that effect if that's doable obviously with permission from the resident right. um and also with beth and um who was her dawn dawn um you know we're okay with something like that effect so i think just the next step is just reaching back out to her and then kind of uh picking her brain again right. and, and, it, uh, and i guess you're thinking not so much a speaker series because those tend to be bigger things but just till something you could open up to folks to sign yeah up and, and yeah and, okay yeah like that's yeah probably like, like a mini walk like right. we did but on someone's property to show them you know how the um the you know, water it can deteriorate right. their creek what not to do not to like they said trim all the way around it and buzz it down to nothing and right. things like that you, you know, know that, that yeah repair their own property and yeah. take care of it that way where you're actually helping the creek and 
and, and the water flow and things of that nature. That was my initial thought. And I'm sure they have others as well, too. So Yeah, they seem to have a lot of yeah, good ideas. I'm sure they have a and, huge And list. really want to get the, the hands-on groups right. out there. So thank you for following I know, up absolutely. on that. Yeah, uh, I thought that the program that they did for us, I thought could be tailored pretty easily to just folks in the neighborhood. Oh, you sure. Know? Sure. Um, general information. A lot of great information. That kind of and, stuff. And, yeah. and I really do think the whole, everything around the creek where you, know, you look out there and it's just grass down to the creek. And, and I never really thought much about that. Right. You know, I understand that's the way people want it to look nice and green. And, but now we know all the reasons not to do that. Right. And, and I think that would be a great educational opportunity. All right, uh, next up speaker series. I touched on this just a little bit. My, my goal is to start putting a program together for hazardous products in the home. And we can kind of have that work in parallel with, with what Jeff's doing with the, the streams and, and green space and, and that sort of thing. So it'd be really nice if, if here in the next several months we could get a couple of different programs going. Uh, and, and John had mentioned that coming up August 3rd is National Night Out. You wanna to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, it's really sort of like a law enforcement slash first responders community relation type of event. It's gonna be out back here, but because we do have lots of committees like Environmental Committee or Activities Committee, sort of requesting that maybe, you know, we have a table there just to hang out and stuff from five to 8 p.m. that Tuesday on August 3rd. Okay, and I personally cannot do that night. I have other plans. Um, what, uh... I'm sorry. It's what? August third. That's a Tuesday night. From five to eight. Looks like we're hanging out uh, at a table with some handouts. It's been so long now since we've done one of those. Do we yeah. still? <laughs> we still Who have has the handouts? Uh, I still have. I can print oh, more yeah. out. Like we still have okay. the. Uh, okay. Yeah, we still have the banner. Uh, we still have like one of the big green space maps. Uh, I think we still have lots of uh, bird feeders and some of the uh, little yellow trash bags too. Right. So, and well, I wonder if we could even get. Typically, I can do that. So. Okay. But we can confirm that. But yeah, it's August third. You said. Yes. August third. Yeah, five to eight p.m. And just kind of get back into the into the hang of of doing these these little displays. So hopefully when everything starts back up, because I guess we can't do that for community day this year. It's not set up for. Yeah, for we're not doing any right booths right now. Right, here. right. Yeah, sure. As soon as all the booth events come back up, we can Let's get back to that. Mm -hmm. National night up. So August 3rd, I, I'm available. Ken's available. Just I'll be here that night too. Not so available. So okay. John, you're going to be with us. I'll probably be floating around. Floating. Like, at least help you set up, you know, it's, Probably not going to be as big as community. We also know that you know there's a pretty wide range of people who just walk right by us. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. You know, you never know. If you get. But then you get a few that want to dive into some deep discussion with you. So yeah, I mean, if it's supposed to be like a kid-friendly event, hopefully we can give away some yeah. Yes. Do we still kid, have some? Oh, no, we still have plenty. We started giving away the front desk actually. Because oh, really? Like, okay. <laughs> not spare, so. Oh, that's great. And do we want to, I, I know in the past, we've, we've just put a sign up sheet in there just in case somebody wants to volunteer to help us with our programs. Do that. I'm not sure that we, you know, normally we get a name or two. It's, if nothing else, it's a great, great it's a, place to recruit your uh, litter pickers. Right, yeah, we, I, that's, yeah. I was just thinking a flyer for the litter um, pickup. Um, yeah, I think we did have in the past a sign up sheet for cleanup day if we had a date yeah. that was that be good or just to volunteer in any capacity right we've tried that too right okay oh well, okay. since that's coming up that's what about three weeks um i, I guess i i need to let you know jonathan and ishmael know that this is this is out there too if anyone else wants to volunteer, um, right. but if if you guys can just work directly with John, is that the, the easiest way for us to do this? Or? Yeah, like I said, I'll be probably staying for that evening so I can at least help set up the table. Okay. 
Okay. Is the table going to be there and it's just a matter of putting stuff up? Or I need to talk to the guys downstairs about what their layout's going to look like, but apparently okay. we have plenty of tables back there. As, long as, as long as I know what's going on, I'll be good. Okay. Just let me know what's going on. Where, it's in the, the parking lot right behind Town Hall or parking over on the field. Heritage? Over here, down here. Oh, okay. I think it's going to cross over up there to the Heritage Center. The, the library is going to be up there too, but okay. it's probably, we are probably going to be down here, I'm assuming. Okay. No, thanks. Thanks for bringing that up, John. And thanks, guys, for volunteering to do that. Um, do we have any other community outreach thoughts, ideas? Anybody else heard anything out there that? that we should be jumping into. Somebody, somebody mentioned, are you looking for garden in the park or somebody's trying to- I just, I, I check their website check about it. once a month and okay. have not no, seen I haven't anything. gotten an email from them, so, because I usually do, I usually have my- Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, the so other two, right. right. I haven't gotten an email from them. And I've, I've asked a couple of friends who haven't heard anything either, so. Well, there's a lot of things that they if they take six months of planning. Right. You know, six months ago, nobody knew <laughs> where we were going to be. So that's that's my guess there. Stuff Just six one thing with the suburban whitetail hunters and stuff like that. That most of the uh, ladder stands are out of ballpark, and um, they're in the process of assigning the hunters to go to the different areas and all of that. Oh, okay. Okay. So that that is moving along. I just need about four hunters up behind my house. <laughs> now, did you, did you sign your property up to be part can't of that? my property. It's too small. Yeah, and, and you know, neighbors. But right, right. Although my neighbors would let me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's a, uh, the art show. That's and any of that no it and to be honest i never did follow up with the art center on that yeah that takes a lot of preparation right and that's something we need to start talking about probably right. late winter well before then to get it scheduled um but that's that, there's a long lead time on that getting getting it advertised and um, and that that didn't happen this year so yep. that's we need to discuss that very early next year to see if we have the, the manpower to to follow through because that does take take several hands to keep that one going. All right, on to miscellaneous things, McMail tips. Ken, can we bug you again this month? Well, how about <laughs> bugging me this month since I failed to I didn't follow through last month, yes. So you could do that for us next I yeah. guess the end of this month, John, what's the date this time? Okay, McMail's going to go out on Friday, July 30th, so maybe, you know, Wednesday, July 28th. Okay. Thank you, Ken. I got too, <laughs> too busy, and then when I'm up at my cabin and stuff, I don't have internet and stuff, so. Right. Well, the, the last, I think I had one last summer that I forgot until I was in uh, Utah, and I did it on my iPad while I was <laughs> Utah. I, I found that I ended up putting in a booster in my cabin to get so my cell phones more mm. than one bar and now I can use my phone as a hotspot so oh, now I can get go. internet all right uh, just a quick update on the the open EAC position we are actively interviewing we we had a couple last night we've got another one lined up so hopefully we'll we'll have somebody on our <laughs> on the committee to take that spot. It'd be nice to be in time for the next meeting, but we'll certainly to let everyone know. All right. Do we have any other topics for discussion or to to look ahead for next month? Um, I still have the tree for um, oh, for Brian for Brian Moore. That's uh, probably a fall event, I guess, to plant a tree, right? Um, if you want it to live. Um, yeah, the original plan was somewhere out front. Um, then the sidewalk got built. And then there was some landscaping done. So we got to 
kind of start over again with Jeff and see where, whether it makes sense out front or somewhere else, you know, on the, on the ground. The site, you know, we can help you with picking an appropriate tree. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so that's ongoing. Right. That's, that's kind of on my um, plate. Okay. Um, we don't have anything else to do. Oh, we had um, catch basin stickers. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> we had, you, you ended up with a few of them, right? Right. You yeah, had quite a few. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't think we had that many. Yeah, Jason had a piece of out left over. So, kind of after the paving season, the idea would be to get from Jeff what streets were paved i guess right and then somehow um maybe put a feeler out for some volunteers to help us do that boy scouts girl scouts i didn't do it last time but i don't know really know what's involved oh i did it's 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 actually very easy that's very easy yeah. it's it's messy okay. <laughs> that sounds perfectly young boys <laughs> And it's actually kind of difficult. You have to find a flat spot. Behind, and, and sometimes if, if they didn't do the wedge curb perfectly flat behind the, the inlet, it just kind of pops right off. Or you have to sometimes tell the neighbors what you're doing or they come and pull them up because they think you're doing bad things. But um, because um, I, I mean, I certainly don't mind doing that, but if it's an outreach opportunity to get somebody else involved, right, um, exactly, I'm, yeah. I'm all for that as well. Um, I don't have any any I'm, scout contacts. Right. I'm just thinking we had the uh, the Boy Scouts help us with the litter cleanup in the spring, and mm -hmm. talking to the leaders, they're like, you know, we're always looking for projects to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably, you know, for me to reconnect with them also on, for the fall cleanup, but um, explain this project and um, see if that's something they want to take on. Okay. Um, do you need, do you need the list of streets? Do we need to, to get in contact with public works? And that's probably I mean, the paving programs. Them. We have the list on the it's website. Like, exactly. Right. I doubt okay. there's any of them that are going to be missed this year. It seems like they're doing really well. So mm -hmm. okay. maybe a little bit later, a couple months from now, we can figure out if they're right. done. And that's what I think we did it in the fall the last time. Right, right. Because that was all done and the weather but, kind of. But the paving done. is kind of all over the place, right? right. It's not like. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, if you've got the kids out there, you want to find some little back streets in the neighborhoods. Right. Yeah. Because that's all I did. I just had all the information, all the stuff in a bag, and I just walked through the neighborhoods. And... By yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. But I mean, obviously, you can, you can split up. Right several kits but um i don't know how much of the adhesive we have we whenever we're done i'll bring the box into my office sure because that's know. that was the issue i had that there was i think barely enough adhesive for the, the stickers i had it, it takes a good bit to to get them down there so just so, take so if that. we know what it is like we can get that it's, yeah it's actually actually says decal adhesive <laughs> but i'm sure it's similar <laughs> to something else you can you can find so but it's but it's black it's, would work. this was a special black to match the, the asphalt i guess <laughs> but i i appreciate you following up on that date okay thanks um the other thing i just want to mention um i saw john you put a a note on the facebook page i guess about the hard to recycle so that's yeah. awesome that's on that track. thank you um, that's uh, what July 31st at La Roche. Uh, I think you have to register first. Is that the yeah. deal? They still have the pre registration site open, so it was fine to share. Okay. Stuff. All right. Oh, yeah. Good to advertise that. I saw a computer monitor sitting on the street the other day. I guess waste management was going to pick it up. If you call them, they come, you know, it's like I had 
it took an old computer and an old flat yeah. screen TV for yeah. me. We've used them several times. And really, you're not supposed to put it out on the street. Right. That's what I was your, your curious about. You, they usually want it up you know, uh, by the garage door house, or something yeah. like that. Because they'll tell you, you have to schedule several weeks ahead, but they'll give you the date. Uh huh. And it's just supposed to be out there first thing in the morning that day. Yeah. No. And I've had great, yeah. great yeah, uh, I've done experience a couple with times too. Well, mm -hmm. Same thing. And that program's going to continue, right? Mm -hmm. With the uh, the new vendor. That was the one certainty. It's okay, good. Continue. One certainty. Uh, sorry, that's all that I. No, have. that's that's fine. Thanks for, my, for bringing those back up, Dave. January first. All right. The next is report from town council. Um, I don't really have anything <laughs> this is something i apologize in advance i usually try to keep my papers more organized but did i speak to the committee about this is this is not like your this is about the boy scouts and my neighbor and eagle scout projects i don't think so okay so by the way i uh, gary robertson is his name He's um, ex-military, he's now a real estate broker, mm -hmm. and he has been involved in scouting for like the last um, 35, 40 years. What he's mostly involved with is like particularly the Eagle Scout process. Mm -hmm. And he works with, um, um, he has a special interest in, in working with the the boys who i guess have to do a i don't really know about scouting so but i understand that they have to do a very significant project mm -hmm. in order to complete their eagle scout program so that's what we're really talking about here it's like his group of scouts like i asked him about cleanup day and that kind of volunteer you know mm -hmm. that's right. not his that's not his yeah his thing but um I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, and I, I actually wanted to give the, the committee his name and his phone number because he said, here's an example. Let's just say that we get um, some grant money and, you know, we've kind of talked about a more rustic trail at Wall Park. Mm -hmm. He said that he's, his scouts have done projects, complete projects like that, that include, um, fundraising activities for it, not that they're going to come up, I mean, but if we have money and they can do it, but fundraising for it, um, they've done park renovations, they've created bird sanctuaries, um, and done all kinds of trail work, I guess, in North Park and other parks around, around the area. Um, they do a lot of work with the Nature Center. So in any event, I just wanted, um, before I lose track of this, to give you the name and his phone number because he said that he would be very happy to speak with, um, you know, and if I'm still here, I mean, it's mm -hmm. between now and the end of December, right. of course I can be the go-between, but um, he sounded very enthused about mm -hmm. um, if there were opportunities that could, um, but he did say that it's something, um, it needs to be a project that they can kind of take on and own. Right. And um, he said that the typical projects, they're, they're, they're students of 16 to 17 years old. And most of the ones he's worked at have been two to 300 man hours okay. involved in them. Um, at it has to be at least 100, he told me. But most of the things he's worked with, two to 300. So, you know, it does sound like this could be a substantial um benefit to something mm -hmm. that would come before this committee oh sure so the name again is gary robertson r-o-b-e-r-s-o-n okay his uh phone number is oh i hope this isn't his wife's that's okay it'll get to him 412-337-3298 so I just wanted to have that on record. Yeah, because I see that as, you know, to our, to our underutilized green spaces. That's, <clears throat> I mean, would he 
want us to pretty much have an idea fully formed or can we say no no i think mark here's the space yeah no i think that he what do you envision i think that they're more than willing that they need a concept i mean not a concept like on paper mm -hmm. but they need somebody here's a we want a trail that's going to go through here we this is where we want it to go. In. We, we want, um, Kim did, I because I told Kim about this. I don't know if there's anything EAC wants to get involved with, but she said, I was telling her about um, she, and John, I, I thought we landscaped it, but she was talking about the hillside by town hall, like along the new sidewalk. I thought that was landscape too, but I wouldn't really be. Involved I in consider it landscaped, mm -hmm. but she was talking about that in front of the parking lot and to do benches and landscaping and a habitat garden and native plant garden. I'll look at that one. I mean, I'll, I'll follow up on that and get her thoughts. But anyway, um, somewhere, someplace, maybe even with this um, Adam Butler property yep. or mm -hmm. something. Um, the only thing is that it's not just like a volunteer thing that this this person must like own it right. and they can find their own assistance they can do fundraising for certain things That's they a, do and you talked about funding and grants are they looking for a project that we would have money or they do all the fundraising no no that, that was just an added bonus okay. that if there's some project mm -hmm. that the, the the individual themselves would do some could do it. It would depend on the and project they, if that were appropriate. For, um, for um, some donations from businesses, and, uh, and then you see, and I think Hampton Community Park has some some bridge structures. Yeah, they can build things. Done. Right. Yeah. So my um, son did his uh, eagle. He's an eagle scout, and it was at Stonewood Commons on Rochester. It's in Rosta. They mm -hmm. had the br bridges washed away, and they did. They built brand new bridges from scratch. Okay. But the funding was the the community yeah. of that area. They they had all the supplies. Okay. And they just had to labor and to build it. Did you say your son's an Eagle Scout? Yes. Okay, so you know all about it. Oh yeah. Sorry, you should have just interrupted. <laughs> said I know all about it. No, but, uh, yeah, I know all about it because you know as the son does it, so does the father. So did I kind of explain? I, go, oh, I got out of a little pin. Because <laughs> <laughs> they do. Can they do 10, 10 hour projects or does it have to be like one? I don't know. I'll have to go back and look and ask if there's an actual set minimum or maximum hours because we had his <laughs> two or three scout leaders were there, obviously overseeing the project. And they had the relationship with the person who was part of the HA for the, the grounds. And then they, had, they went out and bought all the supplies. Basically, it's a teaching moment for the kids. But, you know, there was any given day there was three to six scouts there and they weren't all eagle scouts they were part of the the troop uh -huh. they were helping him finish his project so that he would help someone else to finish their project and right. they just continue to do that as they go up their ranks yeah so it's basically free labor uh -huh. yeah. yeah and then they get they get and then the other ones that are the under classmen or with the other with the other boy scouts um, they'll actually get pins and stuff for helping and uh, doing you know, depending on what it is, trail work, woodwork, uh, machinery, mm -hmm. you know, so they get their, they meet all their requirements for their merits and stuff too. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was an eye opener, but it was really neat. Yeah, because I was down there helping them too. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's, no, that's good pass, because pass that along that could yeah. be go back to the trail or go back to right. Adam Butler or anything yeah. like that, that that could be done. Same and frankly, way. if you have something for Gary, I mean, I can, it doesn't even mean if it matter if it's after December, he lives across the street from me, we're friends, so <laughs> you can certainly use me as a go between two if there's anything you want to present to, because the way he said it would work is, you know, kind of present it to me, give me mm -hmm. the thoughts that you have about what type of project, mm -hmm. and then he'd take it back, kind of like the capstone kids, yeah. he'd take it back to the group of, of, Eagle Scout wannabes or, you know, <laughs> um, and see if someone wanted to take it on. Right. So, okay. Um, that's, that's all I had, um, unless anyone has any questions for me, council related or anything. Chickens passed. Nope. I'm good.
Can I mention one other thing that I thought about? Um, another project that's came, that's come up sort of as a fall time activity is some maintenance of the town's rain gardens um, by public works. Um, I think we're maybe thinking that if there's no um, community day, that might free up some hours for public works to do some maintenance of those rain gardens. That was sort of thought about a year or two ago, probably two years ago. I remember never it happened. being discussed. So they, these are rain gardens that are already in place. Yes. Um, do we have somebody that directs how that's done? Um, we were going to kind gardeners. of do that underneath, under the master gardener, though her name escapes me, the one that's Donna, Donna who's come here a couple times. Right. And, Besides all helpful, the, the, the way, yeah. plant type talking, I remember she thought that it was it made sense as a fall activity okay. to clear out what shouldn't be there and help what should be there and maybe more mulch or less mulch or whatever. Happens. I hope someone's going to. Um, I mean, great idea, but I hope that they're knowledgeable about what's right and what's wrong right. in a rain garden. Yeah. Because if it's all about aesthetics, what looks wrong is definitely <laughs> right. Yeah, what looks like a weed is not necessarily a weed in a rain garden. Yeah, well this, uh, Donna, the reason I got mixed up with her is she was part of this group that created the rain garden off Ingemar, um, down, um, in North Park, is it near Behind the Shaler, Shaler Grove, Shaler Pavilion yeah. or something down? It's in a low area mm -hmm. that um, floods. Uh, uh, I don't know, often it has flooded in the past, but anyway, um, it's supposed to take all that rain that comes down that driveway mm -hmm. and entrance way and um, hold it or slow it down before it hits the right. creek. So, anyway, she was part of the group that actually built all of that rain garden and um, her and some of her colleagues have knowledge of what what's good and what's bad in terms of the plant, yeah no the I'm, I'm just yeah. saying that if that just should be a making sure and and, may, and maybe our, our public works people are very not knowledgeable i'm yeah. not suggesting they're not but right. um it is a different animal in, yeah. as right. in terms of maintenance yeah, you just don't go over with a, a weed whacker. Right. No. And is that something that's happened before? Is there some agreement that Public Works takes care of that? Yeah, or that's, that, that was our, my understanding from the last time was is that that's Public Works responsibility. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's apparently some back behind the Public Works garage. Is that okay. correct? And there's one over on this parking lot over here. Kind of. I know there's one you know, on the over by the history thing but yeah there is behind the it's something i, I it looks like nothing I mean, this is the salt shed no behind the salt shed oh okay it is something they built back there but um john do you know what they i don't think it was considered a rain garden it was it's been a while since i've been back there. it was, was a like some kind it was a mitigation oh thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like I, I never quite could figure out what it how it functioned though. So I can't say, say much more about it. If you just leave that alone over there, that'll redo itself. Because that's floodplain. So actually um, that is the area that um, I'm sure I won't explain this perfectly, but it's um, there is a project going on in, I believe it's Muna Robinson, and it's one of those projects that the developer needs to do some mitigation mm -hmm. elsewhere. So the proposition, which has been approved by council, is that they're um, they're going to be doing um, all stream restoration work along, I think, 1,400 feet of Pine Creek out here. Wow. 
at their expense, of course. Wow. That's what all those ugly tree tubes were down in North Park was from McCandless Crossing yeah. remediation. And I got the rangers to take those ugly tree tubes out and put wire there instead. So yeah, so those are little beauties. But, um, you know, hopefully what they do will be um, good. There's no telling on that. It's like for wetlands, they, were, they put in sugar maples and stuff like that, that that's not really appropriate. But the adventure they, guys when from when they from, done for the McCandless crossing. Yeah, I know, I know that was not exactly my idea of a mitigation project, but Bruce said it was okay. I'm assuming somebody did. And Andy Beckley from the parks knew nothing about it. <laughs> no. Wow. So is there anything we have to do to um, facilitate that or where, where do we fall in I that I think process? I should I should probably write an email to Jeff and Bob and say, you know, these are kind of old old projects that have an old project that has come up and you know, what do you think? And we can timing wise you can do that between when they're done with doing their, their summer grass cutting and stuff right. and before leaf pickup. Before that, pick that up, window right. in there is, is, is a good time to right. do that. And we'd have to coordinate with Donna or some of her um, right. colleagues to kind of, maybe it's, what do you think, it's like a half day or a whole day of being over there and she it sort of points out what, I'm sorry. I can't speak to that. <laughs> some, some, somewhat that depends on the ability of people to get things done. Why don't you say I'll I'll do that? Okay, um, thanks, Dave. Because I think we want to let him know about the catch basin stickers also. Okay. And Brian's tree. Okay, so you have the, several things I you have can a discuss. Couple things that I okay. Can, um, Great. Let Jeff know about. Okay, thanks. That are coming up. I think the only other thing that I I also believe I mentioned to you guys is that there's the possibility of that donation of land along Pine Creek Road. I tell, it was it's related to there's a plan in front of um, it the planning commission. Um, the, the farm, the farm, yeah, associated yes. with that property. Yeah, I gave you kind of a heads up on that before. I believe so. Yeah, I believe it was mentioned. It was. It's still. Um, so, it's it's still in. I I would call serious discussion. Um, the approximate size of the parcel that would potentially be donated to the town is about, uh, I think it's just a tad under six acres that is all surround, you know, it is Pine Creek and surrounding. That's something to get Bill and, and I'm gonna forget her name, the new president that you were on the walk with the- Kim. Kim. Yeah. The, that's something to get them directly involved in, I think. Perhaps, I don't know how the EAC yet can help out because you know, we, we actually do have um, perspective, um, I would call them schematic engineering drawings for um, about two, we believe about 2 million gallons of flood mm -hmm. uh, of water mitigation mm -hmm. with um, some side channels, rain garden, a detention. Now, when we can afford to build them all, isn't that maybe another question? But I, I, I'm bringing it up because I certainly would see, um, and there may be, there may be more to do with the property than just the um, facilitating the storm water management facilities. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of who knows, building, um, getting people involved that know about it, doing something else community oriented with it. Can Although I don't know how to access it, so that, that might not work. That might that can actually almost be like a small park. Um, 
you know, except I, now that I'm thinking of it, I'll, I have to go back and look at the plans. I'm not sure how you'd access it okay. because of how the development is developing around it. Well, well, oh, just, we're going to have to have an access easement somewhere. They're going to have to right, give you an right. easement. Yeah, I mean, of course we are, but I don't know that it would be suitable for like parking. Parking, but more to come. More to come. Okay. I think it's an okay. exciting. Um, it's just my opinion, a very exciting opportunity to um, um, be able to control part of Pine well, that's, Creek. That's right. at the head. That's yeah. a real important place to do it. Mm -hmm. That's my thinking as well. That it's uh, um, and it's a property if. We don't get it is it's not something we can recover in the future so i'm i'm very um i'm, I'm hoping before i leave council that's something that we're able to get accomplished right. um, i'm very much in favor of it and is that one of the areas where it's it's mowed right up to it and mm -hmm. so it really and it's a straight channel so it just everything just goes <laughs> so yeah there's there's a lot of great things we could do yeah mm -hmm. did we walk in it no that's up above that was above that's it. what the, the, one lady that was there that left early mm -hmm. on our walk, that's what her group was about, is trying to not have let that development happen. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. No, thanks. Keep us yeah, at one update. point I wasn't, it, I wasn't, it, it, it was because the real estate matter and it's like a an executive session, but the, the uh, developer um, has been quite um, open mm -hmm. about, um, I mean, he's trying to make he's trying to leverage that <laughs> that of course um which i which is legit i mean it can be a win-win that's how i'm looking at it um for sure um but yeah he is he is he has not only um talked to Oak publicly about it but he's also been talking with the uh, residents um in the vicinity who have been opposing the development and stuff so i think that it seems to be moving along so great great now I'm one, can I ask a question? The town may love that there's land being donated. Mm -hmm. Does the school district fight that? Because there's land being taken off the tax rolls? Um, have you ever heard of that? I have I, it, never in any discussion we've had about any land that have we, has that the school board been an issue? I had a, instance with a, an assessment um, in Westview, um, the North Hill School District, and they didn't, they didn't fight it. Um, but the folks that I was dealing with said North Allegheny is by far the most difficult and hardest and to, to deal with in terms of assessments and they, they want everything that they can get. So yeah, I went through that one with my house. So um, well, certainly, I'm, I'm assuming they would have to somehow sign off on something. So right. I I don't know the answer to your question, but certainly it could. Or maybe an assessment of the they, the other land makes up for what's donated. Or, or they might look to the town to. Because so, you're going to have so much increase in the value of the rest of the, the project. The value of the other that, land. That's diminished. Maybe that's it. Because right one, now one would like to think that they would, and it's such an important thing, they would cooperate. But... No, 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 no. They're going <laughs> well, to fight. Gonna, they're gonna fight I'm going to be optimistic. The, the attorney will fight it. Okay, well, I, I really think because the rest of the development is going to increase their base versus just bare land there now. Right. Um, that they would be foolish to fight it because if that would then, quote unquote, kill the project, they're actually. You know, causing yourself to... revenue loss. Yeah, the, these are estate lots. These are like minimums, like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes, yeah. up to probably a million or more. They're all custom, so hopefully that will satisfy them. Okay. Now I can't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and all those lawn chemicals coming down into the plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just being difficult. <laughs> All right. Because your time is short on. <laughs> we don't have any public with us tonight, right? So we have no public comments. So next on the agenda is adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor, adjourning.
All right, we are done for the evening. Okay. Well, it was nice to see you all. It was. Yes. It's, it's nice not wearing masks and 